Hey guys, this is Gatsby with Dave, and today you join me for episode 16 of Road to Colonization, and we start with the Duna Fuel Shuttle. On its way to Duna, of course, it's just about to make its plane change. We've set up the flight computer to do this because, well, it does it best, and I don't think I'll have um, communication when I got to get to the node, because remote tech, um, and also the flight computer is super precise with its maneuvers. So we move in a little bit, let it kind of lock in the position, and then let it just do its thing. Yeah, this, uh, luckily, because its job is to haul fuel um, off of the surface of Duna, has more than enough Delta V to get to Duna from Kerbin, which is fairly nice. I'm uh, pretty I'm pretty happy with this vehicle. It looks, I think it looks pretty good, which is, you know, it's pretty nice. Anyway, that, that was the maneuver really quick, and it looks like we will indeed arrive in the right place. So we'll throw down an alarm and deal with that when the time comes. But now we have a smaller mission to be doing, but an important one nonetheless. Um, we're launching an SSTO, a Nighthawk 3B. Yes, this is very similar to the one I launched last time, except it's a cargo variant and has had, <clears throat> has had its wings modified very slightly to kind of move the center of lift because uh, cargo is heavier than people apparently and what this is doing is just hauling a couple of docking ports up to the space station because we have a mission to load ore onto the Minmus space station and we'll have to use the miner for that however the miner doesn't have um, a docking port on it so it can't actually take the ore up to the station so we're going to have to send a crew to go and attach a docking port to the miner so that it can complete the mission so this is just bringing up the parts we need for that a few tools and things as well and we're also going to switch the crew out because the crew's been in the uh, um, fuel shuttle for a very long time and uh, also these people have more more equipment. So yes, this is just uh, gonna try and get it to as, as fast as possible before it needs to push on into orbit. So I think I get up to about 1200 meters per second before I uh, start angling up. Um, although I'm still on jet engine mode right now because it's fairly capable. Rapier engines make SSTOs fairly easy. Um, although my other SSTOs weren't using rapier engines, I guess I just didn't unlock them. But yeah, it's more efficient actually to use uh, not rapier engines, if you do it right at least, I think. Um, so anyway, yes, but Regardless, we do uh, push on into a fairly good trajectory. We're going really fast, so we're going to way overshoot the station, um, which means reaching it will be fairly easy because I can just extend my orbit out. When you arrive really close, it's actually kind of annoying because um, you can't just head right for the station if you don't have like a ton of fuel. You kind of have to do some orbital, orbital ballet and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, we've still got a decent amount of Delta V in the rocket engines and a ton of liquid fuel for using the jet engines to fly home if we so need. Um, but yeah, so now we're in orbit, just burn prograde a little bit until our encounter gets nice and close, which it does. And then arrive at the station. Oh yes, there it is, the Odin station, looking slightly better than it did um, when I first built it after I rearranged it. But I'm still not super happy with it. It didn't come out exactly how I wanted. But anyway, it, it does the job. It holds a lot of fuel and it looks fairly industrial. So yeah, so we're just going to go and park up next to the um, fuel shuttle right here. I'm going to grab some of those docking ports. Annoyingly, they don't fit in inventory, so we're going to have to... Um, just kind of move them across manually. However, I come across a problem. Uh, apparently these docking ports, for some reason, have had one of their nodes kind of screwed up. So Kerbal Attachment System can only attach them front-wise, which means I can't use them. I try everything, um, but these docking ports just will not will not be attached properly. Um, so I can't use them. So this was a waste of a mission. But I'm obviously not going to give up. I'll just grab one of the docking ports off of the Odin station and then maybe bring that up some other time, although not in that SSTO because it seems to break docking ports. Yeah, Kerbal Attachment System is obviously what I'm using to um, move these parts around. And it, it's a mod, so maybe it just doesn't quite understand the nodes. I tried switching which node it connects to, but it would only connect to the front, and I need the front for the docking parts. So yeah, anyway, after maneuvering this... Um, docking port down the station, I attach it to the fuel shuttle, and then knock the other ones away, hopefully get them, getting them going nice and fast so that they'll come and destroy the station one day. Um, <laughs> well, hopefully not. Anyway, then we switch out the crew, get the couple of kerbals out, put the couple of kerbals in, and all is good. Load up the SSTO and head off, leaving Odin station behind us. Going home because these people have been in, well, these kerbals have been in space for a very long time, um, doing fuel mining things. Well, fuel shuttling, they don't actually do the mining. Anyway, we just do our re-entry. We overshoot a little bit, but it's better to have excess energy than not enough energy. But we have jet engines anyway, so we're just going to fly back, do a quick turn around, and then arrive at the runway. However, when I deploy my gear, the front one doesn't come down because it's apparently stuck in the cargo bay, so I have to open the cargo bay to land, which is fine. I was a little worried I'd have to land without the front wheels, which is always fun, trying to like hold it up enough on its back wheels so that it slows down and doesn't you know, slam forward and kill the kerbals. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a difficult maneuver. But anyway, uh, I don't have to do that today. We can just land gently with the cargo bay open. Yeah, I'm getting quite uh, quite fond of these little SSTOs for small payloads. I don't need a big SSTO because I have rockets and rockets are far superior. Um, but yeah. Anyway, so back in space we get the shuttle leaving the station and heading off to Minmus because, uh, well, it needs to go and go and, well, fix up that uh, miner so that it can dock. Uh, the miner was obviously never meant to dock, but uh, now it is required. Yeah, a fairly long burn as as, a, as usual because it's, you know, nuclear engines and a very big spacecraft. Um, but yeah, then we tweak our orbit a little bit, do a couple of plane changes, have some weird KSP stuff where it's like, you're not getting there anymore. Um, but then eventually kind of fix it, although that says we're going to slam into Minma, so I'll have to change that now. Um, but it's close enough. Now, so we'll just use RCS to move that out a little bit. And then go in and land. Um, People keep suggesting me ways, uh, su suggesting to me ways of making it easier to land near the miner, like put wheels on the uh, shuttle. It's like, well, it has engines, so it's I can move it without wheels. That was a good, <laughs> that was my favorite suggestion, though. Put wheels on the on the fuel shuttle so that it makes it easier to land it near the miner. Um, but no, I think I think jumping around with engines will do for now, especially given that it has basically infinite fuel on the surface. Looks like we're going to be landing in the dark, but now we have uh, ambient light mod, so everything is fine. It does kind of wash out Minmus a little bit, because Minmus is quite bright, and the ambient light mod kind of brightens things. But it's better than not being able to see in the dark, I guess. Um, so yeah, now we're just going to head down, hopefully land. Um, I always have a little trouble landing next to the miner with this, though. I mean, the wheels idea probably isn't the worst thing in the world because, uh, well, it's quite hard to maneuver this, you know, it doesn't have a ton of torque, it's very lumbering, it has fairly low thrust, and Minmus is kind of just a very light um, body, uh, which makes it kind of sort of annoying to land on. It's like, you think, oh, light body will be easier to land on. It's like, yeah, kinda. I mean, it's not as bad as Gilly, because Gilly's the worst, because you, like, fire engine one time and you just escape. <laughs> yeah, there will be a mission to Gilly uh, once the Concordia gets back. We won't be landing on Eve with crew, with crew, of course, though, because uh, we haven't figured that one out yet. All of my vehicles I send to test explode in the atmosphere, so I don't want to load it full of Kerbals. Although maybe the traitor Jeb will do it. Um, although Jeb would probably enjoy it because he's such a badass. Of course, Jeb's still a hero, but, you know, bit of a bit of a... You know, worrisome thing about him starting a private business while being under the federal employ. Um, not super great. Um, anyway, so yeah, you can see I'm burning off quite a lot of fuel just trying to maneuver close to the uh, lander. Um, and I always burn a little too much each way and have to keep um, correcting and recorrecting. But eventually we start to head down close to the miner. And this doesn't have to land right next to it because um, it won't require any fuel um, right now because the, we're just fixing up the miner. Um, once the miner's done with its job, it'll fuel this up and this will go home, but, you know, not before. They will be stuck on Minmus until the job is done. But we touch down rather hard and almost kind of fall over, but we keep it under control with a little bit of RCS. And yeah, so here we are. Now we just need to uh, alter the miner a little bit. So we're going to fetch a Kerbal out of the uh, out of the shuttle, head on over there. Um, and this is, of course, an engineer, because we have some engineering work to do. We need to move this scanner so we can put a docking port there. So we're just going to put that there, throw this little adapter here to try and bounce it out. And then I'm going to put the uh, docking port on top of there. We get flung off by some crazy KSP physics. Kind of funny, except when you're doing it, it's super frustrating, because you're like doing this really tedious building things and then you hauled off the spacecraft. Anyway, now we need to get the um, docking port over there, which, you know, we can't put it on our inventory, so we're going to have to kind of drag it. So you put it on the ground and keep moving it across the ground, which is, you know, a little tedious, but it's fine. Um, I did do try pushing it at some point, but that kind of doesn't work, although when I watch it back, it actually looks like it was more effective. Um, as you can see, I just like, I'm going to just run at it. I mean, it looks kind of effective, but I... I apparently elected not to do that, so I'm just going to keep using the kind of dragging technique. However, this does present a problem, as you'll see in a second, in the uh, Kerbal Attachment System. Ever the slightly glitchy thing, um, it's actually pre held up pretty well. There's just been a couple of things this episode, and the thing this episode is it explodes. Um, yeah, we lose the docking port, and then I quit load, because I'm like, fuck that, um, and it's gone. So we don't have that docking port anymore, so we're going to have to send another one which is a little annoying, so we'll do that in a bit. But yes, um, apparently we're not, we're, that, uh, yeah, that's just gone. It was, it exploded so hard it was deleted from the quicksave file, so I don't know what to tell you about that. Long mission for nothing. 
Um, <laughs> which kind of sucks. That was about half an episode on trying to get a docking port to Minmus. <laughs> it exploded. Wow, yeah, when you say it like that, it's kind of depressing. But anyway, here we are with the Concordia, forgetting about all the troubles on Minmus. Um, heading home, of course, just doing a quick tweak so that we arrive nice and close um, to... Kerbin, because, well, yeah, we're heading home from Duna. We'll be getting there fairly soon now, but not before the um, Canterbury reaches um, reaches Duna. Um, yeah, I'm having trouble focusing on Kerbin. You can see it's not it's not working. And then I'm like, oh, I'll just click on the line, but that doesn't work either because the thing glitches out, so I do a quick load and a quick, sa a quick save and a quick load, and then I can actually switch to Kerbin. Yeah, it's kind of, yeah, a few little glitchy things today, including one time when the pause button stopped, which was kind of annoying. Um, but anyway, it looks like, yeah, we're going to arrive really close, like 85 kilometers, I think I said it at. So, pretty good. Yeah, Concordia will be home soon, home safe. And then heading off to Eve. But anyway, back to the main part of the video, um, getting one docking port to Minmus. Um, we're launching a little vehicle uh, to send more than just one docking port. Well, it's sending one docking port and a little bit of RCS to help the uh, lander dock. And it's on an experimental rocket. A new light lifting uh, little thing, just a solid rocket booster and a small upper stage. And it's really cheap. It's actually probably cheaper than uh, using a reusable rocket, because I think it comes to like six grand or something, which is pretty good. Great for light payloads, just for like things that are like two tons. So yeah, the solid rocket booster takes us all the way up to here. We ditch that. Oh, well, we will ditch it. We've actually launched ourselves in a slightly high trajectory, but it's fine. This has more than enough delta V. And yeah, basically on top of this, there is just a little payload, which is a lander with a little parts box on it. And in that parts box is a docking port, some monopropellant, and some RCS thrusters, so that we can uh, actually help the miner dock. Um, I, I didn't send RCS originally, um, because I was like, ah, I don't need it, but I totally do. Um, anyway, so yeah, we push ourselves on into orbit. The uh, little experimental rocket does a fantastic job, even has a little bit of fuel to spare, which we use to head to Minmus. So we burn that off and then uh, fire up the main engine and head on. Yeah, so uh, this is just... Yeah, little little thing, taking one dog board and some RCS out to Minmus. This is important, though, because uh, we do have a contract to build that space station, and we've built the space station around Minmus, but now we have to fill it with ore, and we really want that money, because it's like 400 grand, and, you know, we're kind of running out, running out of operating capital, and a lot of people are getting very worried. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, then we do a, a quick plane change, obviously, just uh, get ourselves... Hidden into the right part of Minmus, uh, somewhere near the equator, I guess. And then we arrive at Minmus, circularize our orbit, and locate our landing site, which again is on the dark side, which is kind of annoying. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's there. Um, so we'll just target that and then go in and land. Yeah, it's uh, it's funny. I, I, I spent most of yesterday recording this and didn't once occur to me that... I spent about two hours, well, actually more like three, because it was two hours of footage, and then whatever, but getting one docking port at two Minmus and attached to a miner. Surprisingly difficult task, because the SSTO brought up a bunch of def defective docking ports, and then I had to take one off the station, and then that one exploded so hard it wasn't even saved to my hard disk anymore, and then, uh, yeah, um... <laughs> So we had to send this. Uh, I probably should have put two in this, really, just in case, but there wasn't really space, so I didn't. Um, <laughs> but luckily, if I quick save with this, with this, it'll it'll uh, won't explode. Hopefully. Anyway, uh, talking of not exploding, we're trying to land somewhere near the uh, somewhere near the vehicle. Um, not too hard, although again, landing on Minmus not particularly difficult in terms of velocity because well, it's Minmus. There's like basically no gravity. Um, yeah, there's no gravity in space, right? Uh, I got sent um, uh, an, uh, a video today of that guy jumping from, in air quotes, space to do that parachute jump. And the question was like, and the uh, quote was like, wah! And I was like, yeah, it's not space. And they're like, yeah, well, you couldn't do it from space. I'm like, actually, you could. You would just have to go higher up and jump down. You couldn't do it from orbit. It's like, oh, God, people got to learn what space is, man. Anyway, we land, almost break the landers, uh, almost break the minor solar panels, but we touch down fine. And then we get our Kerbal out, get him next to the little thing after we actually reposition that a little bit to be closer to the miner. We grab a docking port, do the kind of drag it up the uh, miner thing, and attach it to the top skewiffly, which made me very, very upset. So we reposition it so it's slightly more centered, and that's looking pretty good. And then uh, we're going to go get our uh, RCS and 
well, yeah, RCS and model propellant into our little inventory. There's also a couple of thrusters on the side because that box can only hold so many things. It has a finite volume, so we had to attach a few things to the side. Um, but yeah, we're going to leave that lander there just for maybe using it as a part shuttle. That could be useful. I don't know. No point scrapping it. Um, but anyway, yeah, I attached the <laughs> model propellant tank to the thing and it falls. And because I didn't actually attach it, I just dropped it there. So we attach the other one there, go and fetch this, we'll throw this on the other side, and then I'm going to have to lay out some RCS thrusters manually. And I've got to put them kind of fairly high up the spacecraft, so I'm actually going to have to do it while flying. So the RCS system on this isn't going to be very good. Um, I have to jump, um, throw the RCS thing on there, before, or throw the thruster on there before I fall down. I have to do it four times fairly equally, which I do a decent enough job of. I mean, they're sort of in the right place, but uh, it's not ideal. Um, but this whole thing's not ideal. I mean, I kind of just totally Frankenstein this vehicle to make it capable of docking. But that's what I love. I love coupled attachment system. I've been a little mean to it today, but it was a little mean to me. So, But it's such a great model. It allows you to like change your spacecraft in a really cool way. Um, and yeah, it's just... The modding community in KSP is just amazing. It like so many cool things come out of it. I mean, we, I mean, Fall of Kerbin, we managed to make a turn-based strategy game out of the like, Kerbal Space Program. But anyway, um, enough talking about that. Now we're just leaving the surface. Something the miner never thought it would do, but it's been spending the last kind of few days, well, last kind of month, f um, filling up its liquid fuel tanks and almost filling up its ore tank. Um, I was a little hasty. I didn't need to fill it up because we've got to do multiple missions anyway. We've got to put 5,000 units of ore on. So if I send up 1,000 this time, I can just send up uh, three more missions, which I'd have to do anyway because numbers. But now we're in orbit. We do, well, getting into orbit, we just need to get our encounter, dump this fuel on the station, just making sure it works, really. Um, I could have waited a little longer to fuel up, but yeah, whatever. Um, so yeah, there we go. We've got ourselves our encounter. Um, and then we're going to swing around the moon and meet up with the space station. Now, it might be kind of difficult to dock because there's a scanner sticking out of this spacecraft and the docking ports on the space station, the small ones at least, don't protrude very much. So it might be kind of difficult to uh, <laughs> um, dock onto this and it turns out it is. Um, so yeah, we arrive at the space station looking rather nice, I must say, actually. Um, not particularly useful to me, but there was a contract and it paid well, so... Anyway, yeah, as you can see, I'm just kind of having trouble maneuvering this with the four thrusters, especially given that it has an ore, like a tank full of ore, which is incredibly heavy um, <laughs> and very dense. Um, but anyway, yeah, we uh, try to dock and smack the space station around, and then after much fumbling and being just generally annoyed uh, <laughs> that I had to do this, um, we dock... And uh, there we go. Pump some fuel, uh, well, pump some ore into the tanks. And all is good. This contract will be soon complete. And next time, we'll be re-arriving at Duna. Yes, the Canterbury and probably the fuel, fuel shuttle. And the Concordia will be getting home from Duna, which is pretty cool. But until then, if you want to go check out a couple more videos, there's my most recent episode of Prison Architect, in which, uh, well, I decide to hire a lawyer because they keep trying to send me to prison. There's also my most recent episode of Fall of Kerbin. Yes, it's back, and it's dark days for Cathenia, but we will fight hard, and we will fight back. There's also links to my Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon in the description if you're interested. But as always, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been KSP with Tape. I will see you next time.